Highway, where the Government Electrical and Engineering Department of the Ministry of Transport, Works and Maintenance is installing LED luminaires to brighten the roadway, thus adding some light to our lives and creating the potential to solve a long-term problem, that of public safety on our roads and highways. Did you know that LED lights generate full illumination more quickly? LED highway lighting systems come to full illumination almost immediately after they are powered up. This can be crucial at dusk and during bad daytime weather when natural light is limited and highway lights need to be turned on manually to adjust for reduced natural light. LED lighting systems can also be programmed to react to limited daylight illumination conditions. Overall, drivers will have properly lit highways throughout the day with LED highway lighting. This is the culmination of a lot of work done over, well, I guess it's eight months, by the Ministry of Transport, Works and Maintenance, together with the Government Electrical Department, with the Permanent Secretary, Mr. Mark Cummins, and Mr. Tyrone White. When I first became the Minister, I made it my business to go and check how many poles were down and how many lights were out from the airport to the Garfield Sobers Runabout, and I found that there were 55 lamps not burning, and there were a number of poles that were out. So what we did is we made it our business to make sure that we can get the highway lit again. And in order to do that, we went through a long procurement process to get the lights here to Barbados. And I'm happy to say that we finally got that process complete. We also started to reposition the bases that had been damaged when cars hit those, those poles. You would appreciate that the reason that the poles came down was not that they were defective, but because due to either careless tension or, or mechanical defect, uh, vehicles had hit the poles and it caused them to be knocked down. So this program, I, I understand from Mr. White, has never really been done in the significant way that we've done it this time. And what we've done is we went through and found every single pole that was down. We started to replace the poles. We have about 40 poles to replace. We've done about 12 already. We have another 35 to do. And we've done about 35 lights and we're gonna do over time over 60 lights to be able to make sure that the highway is lit all the way from the airport all the way to the bottom of University Hill. And then we'll have some additional lights in our place. And by the way, these are LED lights so that the cost in terms of energy would be much, much less. Because how would you feel that your daughter or your, or your mom has a, uh, a, a flat tire on the highway and the area is dark and they don't have any assistance or any way to get that tire changed in, in a well-lit area? So this is very, very important for us. And I'm happy that to see this now come to, to its final phases and get those lights put in for the people of Barbados. The initial cost of LED streetlights may be high, but the overall savings in the long term are well worth it. 200 LED lights cost the government of Barbados at $96,000. And uh, there was obviously no cost of redoing the bases because we had, uh, we had the South Point Depot and I'm thankful to the people I'm thankful to the people of the South Point Depot who were instrumental in getting all of those bases redone. Because can you imagine the speed at which some vehicles hit those poles? They knock out the bases altogether and bend the, the bolts, which are almost inch diameter bolts. So I'm very thankful that was not a, a, a tangible cost in terms of excess on top of our normal salaries. So, uh, and the poles we had already. So we're very happy to get it done at minimal cost. And this is also part of the program because you're aware that the government intends to change out 28,000 uh, lights not on the highway and 3,000 lights on the highways of Barbados so that we can change them from the incandescent lamps which uses double the amount of electricity to half that amount with light emitting diodes, LEDs. Traditional street lights typically have a reflector on the back side of a high pressure sodium lamp. This means that much of the luminance of the light is lost and produces light pollution in the air and surrounding environment. Such street lights can also cause glare for drivers and pedestrians. The benefit of LED street lamps is that most have a lens on the LED panel which is designed to cast its light in a rectangular pattern. This is an advantage over the traditional street light, making the LED lights a safer choice on the road. Um, under the IDB program, we are, we are getting 3,000 lights um, from the Division of Energy, and those will be deployed along the major highways, the roundabouts, um, roadways like um, Saddle Lane, um, Needham's Point, uh, Horsell, 
Greenland, those are the highways that, those are the roadways that we maintain as our lights. All the other lights basically are the utilities and they are being installed on another program. The LED street lights will be placed in strategic locations across the island. It's basically the highway from airport, the ABC highway from the airport to Spring Garden, along the Greenland Road, along the Sandalian stretch, um, roundabouts at Crane, Constant, uh, Jackmans, um, the roundabout at Lancaster, and the, park, the government parking lots and the government beach facilities as well. Did you know that lower crime rates have been attributed to LED lighting? Studies have shown that due to the installation of bright white LED street lighting, crime rates have lowered. With less dark areas, people do not only feel safe, but are safer walking home late at night in comparison to when walking under traditional street lighting. The, the details over the deployment of the LED lights really, um, we're still tr working that out with the Division of Energy. Um, but basically, um, our, our batch of lights um, should be in a single container load. And once that is received, we, we, we will start deployment basically from the airport and come down towards the Spring Garden Road. Uh, we're doing the major highways first. And once the highway basically is at a level that we're comfortable with, then we'll do the minor roads after that. Everyone must accept that while the future may be bright, it will not be the warm yellow yesteryear glow of the old sodium lamps as they make way for LED lights across the country. While it may have been true that first-generation high-intensity LEDs emitted a blue light which could have adversely affected circadian sleep rhythms, leading to reduced duration and quality of sleep, the newer technology of LED streetlights have a color rating of 4,000 Kelvin or K, which is bright white and not blue light. We have gone through three iterations of, of LED lights, really. Um, the, bright, the blue light, white light, is basically at the 6,000 KLN level. Um, we've gone to a more international standard, which is uh, the 4000 K. It's slightly brighter than the, 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 the yellow, yellow light, um, but it's one that's basically used in, internationally. The LED lights basically are directional, so if there's very little back spill onto the homeowner's property, it's going to be focused mainly on the roadway, so we don't have, we expect no adverse effects from using the LED lights basically. Some people may question whether LED lighting may have an adverse effect on bees and other small insects. To lessen the impact on the, on the animals and small, uh, small insects, um, we're using, we're moving toward, well, we have moved towards uh, a lower temperature light, which is the 4000K. It is whiter than the yellow light, but not as, to have an adverse effect on the animal population as such. And because it's directional, we don't expect spill into the areas where uh, small animals and insects basically were traversed. So basically the grasslands and the areas behind the highway were left basically in a dark environment so that they can do their foraging at night and whatever they so desire. In the future, the possibility of solar-powered LED lighting on our island also exists. The environmental advantages of solar streetlights are more than obvious. Regular street lights are connected to the grid, which is ultimately powered by fossil fuels in most cases. The burning of fossil fuel is a source of pollution in the air, causing a health hazard, as well as increasing the concentration of greenhouse gases, which lead to global warming. Solar energy is clean and renewable, with no harmful side effects. Modern LED lights powered by solar energy can reduce emissions by over 50%. Solar street lights offer an off-grid green LED light source. They are powered by renewable energy and could help countries become greener and smarter at the same time. Smart solar street lights fit perfectly in the landscape of cities of the future. They offset future increases in energy demand by offering a clean and sustainable LED light source. They also provide countries with data collection mechanisms that can improve urban planning while running on renewable energy. Replacing our old street lights with smart solar street lights would be a big step in making our cities both greener and smarter.
I think the, the government is actually looking at um, zero cost energy as it relates to street lighting. Um, as you would imagine that the, inf the existing infrastructure is basically power based and we've already committed to the LED lights. Um, in future installations like Highway 2A, the Northern Access Road, where there's no power infrastructure in place, I think the move then is to look to a more solar based powered light to light those areas. Um, so I can see ourselves in the future um, moving towards the solar powered lights. Uh, we have tried some in the past on Trudor Street. Uh, we were not very successful, but since then, the LED, the solar technology has improved so much that in the coming years, we are looking to do some pilots with solar lights in car parks and on streets to see how they function and how best they can be incorporated in, in our high related system. An appealing factor about the LED street light is that it has a lifespan of up to 20 years. Highway lighting fixtures are exposed to weather, traffic and environmental extremes that can cause premature lighting breakdowns and a degraded illumination over time. Next generation LED luminaires can withstand these extremes to give consistent performance over a longer period of time with little or no interruption. Because LED fixtures are more durable, they provide uninterrupted operation with fewer maintenance problems. Modular LED highway lighting systems are also more easily repaired with shorter downtimes than traditional highway lighting. But the major advantage is its energy efficiency compared to conventional street lighting fixture technologies. Suffice to say that LED lights on the highway and roads of Barbados are not only saving the Earth's scarce resources, but taxpayers' money as well. The major benefit of LED really right now is that we can achieve the, the lighting level we want on the highway by using a lower wattage fixture. That means lower energy costs, um, our utility bills, which are astronomical, um, would be lower. Um, it's a saving to government, it's a saving on the fossil fuel imports to, to the country. And this is an overall benefit um, to what we're using now. Because right now we're using the 250 watt uh, high pressure sodium lights. We're moving down to a 133, a 115 LED light. So we're almost reducing our energy costs by about half or more. Um, so we expect the financial benefits of moving to LED um, would be very great for the country, basically. So, not only are LED lights environmentally friendly, but they also provide at least a 60 to 80 percent cost reduction in power consumption relative to the conventional incandescent bulbs. Thank you for joining us, and look out for us next time when we take you on the road.